bed bugs, dank memes, France. What cataclysmic event could result from combining these three things? Well, if some of the more conspiratorial corners of the internet are to be believed, then we're actually already seeing the aftermath of this unholy amalgamation. One simple Google search will yield countless results relating to a Parisian bedbug infestation so severe that it's even resulted in the temporary closure of schools, with the education minister calling for quote-unquote immediate action. Okay, fine, the translation was a little off. He actually said they needed an immediate response. That's... that's a pretty bad bedbug problem. But what could have possibly caused this? What does this have to do with memes? And honestly, how bad are bed bugs that you'd actually have to shut down a school because the stinky kids keep tracking them in? All this will be answered, and more. So stick around as I, Jormai49, your resident edutainment expert, takes you on a wild ride of hatred, legal ramifications, psychological torment, French meme culture, and bed bugs. Lots and lots of bed bugs. Good night. Sleep tight, and don't let Jormai49 catch you not subscribed to the channel. Uh -huh. Before this video truly gets started, I'd like to clarify that I'm covering this topic because I think it's interesting and a little absurd at times, but I don't discount the pain, stress, and overall suffering that people are going through because of bed bug infestations, and I would never ever condone terrorism like that supposedly performed by the subject of this video. I'd also like to say that before I get to the more interesting parts of this video, in which I'll delve into France's depraved meme-laden forums and the alleged bioterrorist that might have caused this bedbug apocalypse, I will be giving a background on bedbugs and the overall situation in Paris. If that doesn't sound interesting to you, skip to chapter 2. I've included timestamps in the description. So with that out of the way, let's get started. And what better place is there to start than by defining why this is even such a huge problem in the first place? Bedbugs. I know we've all heard of them before. They're the subject of a very popular idiom, and just a pretty common point of knowledge, but I doubt much of us know the real specifics of a bedbug infestation. I personally am lucky enough to have never experienced one before, but I've obviously learned a lot in research for this video. Bedbug infestations are deceptive in that, at first, they won't seem like much of an issue at all. Bedbugs are small, and their bites don't cause pain, and they're not known to carry any type of infectious disease. Couple all this with the fact that they multiply rapidly in dark and warm places you may not see, and you have a problem unique in that it will present itself at first as inane, and then balloon into a major issue. Because, even if you're not in pain or at risk of disease, if you're experiencing a bed bug infestation, you're not going to be having a good time. Constant itching, rashes, blistering, along with stress and inability to sleep, and even psychological disorders like delusional parasitosis can befall you. Not to mention, it can cost upwards of $1,000 to have a property treated for bed bugs. If you're wondering what delusional parasitosis is, it's basically the they're in your skin schizo posting meme, except that's all you can think about and you really do think you're growing bugs inside of your skin. It's safe to say that bed bugs have earned their place as one of the most reviled insects one can find in their home. To make things even worse, bed bugs can easily be brought into one's home through bug it, uh, uh, <laughs> luggage. I said buggage, guys, that's funny. Luggage, infested items like furniture, and more. Even walking through an infested area can allow them to latch onto your clothes and infest your living space before you even realize. And so is it any wonder that bedbugs are causing such an uproar in Paris, one of the world's largest cities and a premier location for tourism, with plenty of opportunities for these little menaces to hop aboard someone's luggage and spread worldwide, especially in the year before they'll be hosting the 2024 Summer Olympics? Well, when you put it that way. But let's talk about Paris's issues for a second. What exactly is going down there? As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you do even the slightest bit of research, it's looking grim. Videos are popping up everywhere of people finding bed bugs on local transport, high speed trains, and yes, the Charles de Gaulle airport. The French transport minister is briefing public transportation operators on protocols. 
the deputy mayor of Paris appeared on TV to say, quote, No one is safe. You can catch them anywhere and bring them home, and not detect them in time until they have multiplied and spread. End quote. He also noted the disproportionate effect this has on lower income households because, as I mentioned, it can be pretty expensive to rid yourself of these pests. It's impossible to quantify the exact percentage of French homes that have been infested. However, if a problem gets to the point that your deputy mayor goes on live television to let the people of the city know that, quote, no one is safe? I think it's safe to say you have a nation that's dealing with some serious problems. That's not even the limit of statements made by French government officials. As I mentioned before, the education minister is calling for, quote, immediate action and has been closing down schools if they've been proven to have an infestation of bedbugs. A few days before writing this video, it was reported that five schools with a total student count of 1,500 had been shut down. At this stage, who knows how much that number has increased. I would say I'm sure those kids are thrilled to be out of school, but, well, I can't know that for sure. Furthermore, political leaders like left-wing Mathilde Panot, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but she called out the fact that companies have been charging exorbitant amounts to spray pesticides that, unfortunately, bedbugs may actually be resistant to at this point because, of course, these hellspawn have actually started to adapt to chemicals specifically used to kill bugs. Why not? Uh. Whether or not this will have an actual effect on French politics or on the actions of the government, it's overall very clear that this is a problem that's risen to the scale of being one of France's most pressing issues. So now we know just how bad bedbugs can be, and how bad they currently are in Paris. It's gone beyond the point of national news. The fact we're even talking about it now shows that the bugs have gone international, baby. So is it any wonder that, when an old archive thread on a French video game forum was discovered, making claims like, I am the origin of the chaos in France, and understand why bedbugs explode everywhere, it piqued people's interest. A few weeks ago, a tweet was published by an annoying gimmick account that I won't give any free clout saying that a random forum user in France could potentially be responsible for the bedbug scourge in Paris. I wrote it off as nothing at first. Twitter blue checks farming engagement, of course. Being on Twitter is punishment enough. Why do I have to see the same three obnoxious accounts plaguing my feed forever? However, there was something different about this post. There was a link, something potentially verifiable. So feeling intrigued, I clicked it. What I found was one of the strangest things I've ever come across. Now, I want to take a second to be very clear, and sorry, I know I've been saying that a lot. This video isn't intended to show any hard proof of anything at all. I am making this entirely because I thought it was far too interesting to fall into obscurity. And considering I have 50 subscribers, yeah, I'm probably not doing anything about that. But. Anyway, even if this is all a coincidence, or just the ravings of some random madman on the internet, I still happen to find it really interesting, so you all are along for the ride now. With that being said, let's delve into the disturbed mind of Le Punais Urfu, the crazy bug. Jeuxvideo.com is a French video game forum site. Now, I am something of a gamer myself. But, given that I live in America, this was obviously the first time I'd ever come across this site. But from what I've seen, there's not much to it beyond the fact that it's a forum for video games. That much seems obvious from the domain name. Jeu Video is literally just French for video games. The website is called videogames.com. I mean, there are clearly some discussions happening here that don't involve video games but it seems to be just another forum site akin to Reddit with their own in-jokes and recurring characters. Uh, for example, nearly every post I've seen heavily uses emojis based on El Risitas. And if you don't know, that's that guy from the meme with the, the laugh. I, screw it. Jamie, roll the clip. I don't want to explain this. <laughs> The forumers also refer to each other as case, uh, which is a French term derived from Arabic, meaning brother. I'm assuming they mean bro or dude in this context. 
See, I told you guys you'd be learning about French memes. Let's go. But the cool thing about Jeu Video is that unless a thread is deleted before it's archived, there are archived versions of almost every thread that's ever been posted. And it's through these archives that we're able to behold the anime villain-like manifesto of the bedbug spreading fearmonger, Crazy Bug. The thread which sparked all this interest in Crazy Bug was one entitled, I am the origin of the chaos in France. It was posted on October 2nd, 2023, well into the reign of the bedbugs. In it, Crazy Bug basks in glory, triumphantly replying to comments from other forumers curious about how he did it. But what exactly does this prove? Anyone could have posted this to a forum, especially once an issue had already become widespread. This would also mean any post that they made would likely attract a lot of attention because it's already a big issue. So what is there to stop people from just making stuff up? At least that's what I thought at first. But then I noticed one of the most recent comments left by another user. Quote, I, uh, it's no fake. You're really the original. On the other hand, you're a myth. We're also in 2021. How come the punized, which is crazy, delirium starts in 2023? It's not because of you. The original. 2021. What does any of this mean? Well, if you look into other archive posts made by the crazy bug, things start to come together. On May 31st, 2021, more than two years before the French bedbug issue truly skyrocketed into the mainstream, the crazy bug made a post entitled, Understand Why Bedbugs Explode Everywhere, which I'm guessing means spread everywhere, but it is a funny wording. In it, he gives us all a glimpse into his clandestine plans for France. Hello, Kays. You have undoubtedly noticed a huge increase in topic on bedbugs. As a reminder, these are insects measuring a few millimeters to a centimeter which feed on your blood while you sleep. Once you see one, it's ruined. It's systematically that there are at least thousands, if not millions of others, hiding very discreetly until the problem is so serious that it is almost irresolvable. End quote just to say, I'm pretty sure this guy is echoing me. I, I just did a pretty good job explaining this, didn't I? Quote again. A few months ago, I undertook a new kind of campaign. I, who live in a home close to a major bedbug infestation, started taking packs of 10 into the building in question every day to send and send them by post, hidden in letters filled with hundreds of specimens when I am very motivated, and all this totally at random everywhere in France. The moment you open it, you're screwed, and your new nightmare life begins. When I send a letter, it only takes a few weeks for the target's infestation to be irresolvable, and in a few months, an entire neighborhood has become unlivable, then two, then three, then four, etc., etc. In short, it's a phenomenon exponential. Well, yes, Jamie. Again, the translations are weird. I have a letter budget of around 200 euros per month, and I have already spent almost 8,000. I reach every city in France. But what is my goal, you ask? Why do that, oh big mad bug? Well, that's where the stroke of genius arrives. My interest is twofold. The first is that I hate, I hate France from the bottom of my guts, and I hate the people who live here for the most part. I want this country to collapse as quickly as possible. I calculated that I have already cost more than 1 billion euros alone, and that's only taking into account the costs of treating bedbugs, which in practice is impossible, I'll tell you right away. It will always come back. Don't worry, it's dead. And without counting the costs linked to psychological problems, loss of motivation, efficiency, lack of sleep, possible work accidents which may have occurred thanks to this, etc, etc, in the end, I think we can reasonably, reasonably count on 2 billion euros, but I am not absolutely certain of this estimate, unlike the previous one. The second is that, obviously knowing that bedbug infestations will increase, I can not only ruin France, the state, as well as individuals, but also make as much money as possible by knowing which boxes to invest in and in which sector of activity exactly. The bedbug market is a growing market, very buoyant, and I estimate it at more than 1,000 billion units this year, and double that next year with the return of tourism. So...
The sheer vitriolic hatred and smugness oozing off this post, as well as the confidence Crazy Bug feels that their plan will be successful, to the point that they even predicted people would come back to this post in the future when the infestation became widespread, is kind of awe-inspiring. Also of note are their random and unclear references to the buoyant bed bug market and how they'll somehow use the bed bug invasion to make money off the stock market. After reading this for the first time, I was speechless. It's so hard to even comprehend the thoughts someone must be having when making a post like this. Could this even truly be possible? I mean, nothing they've described would really be that difficult to do. As Bug mentions when replying to a curious user on this post, they've gathered the bed bugs from a nearby HLM, which, if you don't know, is a form of low-income housing commonly found in France, and mailed them all over France, which in and of itself wouldn't be impossible. But the amount of planning and risks taken on by Bug for a nebulous and very random seeming payoff is strange. Plus, how can a person like this even be real? It's hard for me to even imagine someone strutting into their workplace Patrick Bateman style, except instead of after a night of brutally murdering ladies of the night, they just got done meticulously mailing bed bugs across the 13th arrondissement of Paris. But I guess. But there are some massive questions here that come into my mind as I peruse this maniacal villain's monologue. First off, is this a legally punishable offense? And second, would it even be possible for this problem to have been spread by a single person? Third, and most importantly, timeline-wise, is it even possible for Crazy Bug to have planned and enacted this over two years before anyone even noticed the issue on a large scale? I also wonder how Crazy Bug is planning on making money off of this, or what possibly happened to them to make them feel this much hatred, but honestly, I feel those questions are beyond huh? me. We're clearly dealing with someone who lives in a completely different world than we've ever seen. Clearly a mind of such high caliber as normal, non bedbug spreading normies could never understand. But still, before we descend any deeper into these dank forums, I think it behooves us to try to understand a bit more about our bedbug enthusiast situation. So, let's begin. So what legal issues are there, if any, with what Crazy Bug has allegedly done up to this point? Well, funnily enough, and I do find it pretty funny, on the very same day that the first post was made, Crazy Bug also made another post. This one was titled, Need a Law Expert. They followed this up with, PM please, urgent, essentially begging someone to give legal counsel in the DMs, which I don't know if that's the greatest idea. It seems our good friend Bug was hit with a when the Discord group chats leak moment, except, well, they leaked it themselves. However, it's not known whatever came of this. Also, if Bug really did face legal ramifications for their actions, they must not have been very serious. After all, as you might have already have realized, the fact that they were still posting as of October 2023 most likely means they're not scared of any activity being discovered and it definitely means they're not in prison. But if they were to be caught mailing these hardcore nuisances across the country, what would even happen? One of the replies to Bug's post referred to them as a bioterrorist. This would suggest that obviously there are some serious consequences to what Bug's been up to. Given the definition of bioterrorism, which is the intentional release or dissemination of biological agents, which includes bacteria, viruses, insects, fungi, and or toxins, this is definitely possible. However, we can't be sure if that would stick in a court of law, since bedbugs don't actually carry infection the same way you'd expect an agent of bioterrorism to. So for now, let's set the court of public opinion aside. We'll come back to that later. In the meantime, Let's try a different route. If we were really trying to narc on the bug, we'd probably have to find a different charge if we wanted the best chance of it sticking. Causing havoc on this scale has got to result in some kind of repercussions. Well, from my research, I've found that the most likely charge Crazy Bug would face is criminal mischief or destruction and degradation of property. 
After all, forcing someone to pay upwards of $1,000 to restore their property to a safe and usable state certainly sounds like degradation. In France, degradation of property would result in two years imprisonment and a fine of 30,000 euros. So it does seem like this would result in at least some jail time. And two years, hmm. That does perfectly cover the gap between the Crazy Bugs archive posts. Maybe this theory not so stupid after all. Of course, there are still holes in this theory. After all, if Bug had been so unimaginably prolific with their bug mailing that they caused all these problems, would they really only have been charged with one count of degradation of property? It seems more likely they would have been charged for many counts, or even leveled up to a felony. All in all, this is mostly for my curiosity, since I obviously don't have the capacity to prove any actions taken by Bug or uncover their identity, so it's not like I could go anywhere with it. But I do find it interesting to think about what could happen to them for what they've allegedly done. Sadly, the most likely answer is that Bug never faced any repercussions. The only thing they're provably guilty of is cringe on the forums. On to my second question. Is it really possible for a single person to have caused the bed bug infestation? Again, for me, some random re- Oh, he's smart guy. On the internet, this is also impossible to prove. That being said, all Bug claims to do was go to a nearby low-income housing complex, pick up some bed bugs, which, let's face it, is not hard at all in the slightest. If it was hard to get bed bugs, this whole thing wouldn't be an issue and then start placing them in letters to send all over France. Assuming they somehow managed to do this without having it traced back to them? Yeah, I'm not completely sure, but I assume it would definitely be possible. Well, unfortunately, so far it seems like everything's coming up bug. But let's keep going. Let's move on to talking timeline. That is, is it possible for Bug to have done all this more than two years ago, only for it to become a huge issue now? Well, let's start by looking at the bugs themselves. Bed bugs apparently have a developmental period of 37 days. This means that after birth, a bed bug can be mature and ready to start splurting out babies in about a tenth of a year. But how many babies can each bed bug produce and how long does it take? Female bed bugs can produce anywhere from 200 to 500 eggs in their lifetime, and up to 10 of those eggs can be laid in a single day. This means that within two years, a mature bed bug could easily have laid every single one of their eggs, bringing hundreds of new bugs into the world. I did research the mortality rate for bed bug babies, but apparently 97% of them grow up properly. Great. According to the crazy bug, they were mailing bed bugs across France at the absolutely psychopathic rate of 50 letters per week. Well, even if we assume this was an exaggeration, I don't know if it even matters. If each female bedbug has the capacity to create 500 new bedbugs in as little as 50 days in the absolute worst case scenario, then sending even one letter per week with one single male and one single female, although obviously inefficient, could result in an astounding 52,000 new bedbug births in two years. At a rate of 50 per week? We do not even want to think about the results of that. So yeah, I, I guess it is technically possible. So having established that this is technically possible, uh, let's take a look at where the crazy bug is now. Because as insane as it is given how long this video is already, we've barely even looked at the most recent thread attributed to the crazy bug name. That's right, we're headed back to the thread first posted this month, the one entitled I am the origin of the chaos in France. In this thread, a triumphant seeming bug clarifies many things about their ludicrous plot against the state. For starters, they make sure to clarify that they always put, quote, a lot of bed bugs in each letter to ensure that even if someone was able to react to the fact that there were blood-sucking parasites in their mail, they would still be screwed. In their own words, quote, 
I always put in a lot, so that I am sure that once the letter is opened, even if the person rushes to throw away or get rid of them, there will always be at least one or two that will come out." End quote. And you know, I really don't think I can put it any better than French forum user Smell of Come 2. Uh, let's see what he has to say. Quote, In fact, it's like with malware on the internet. Never open a package from a stranger, except that it's not your computer. It's your house that you're contaminating. Eloquent, to say the least. It's in the reply to this comparison that we get a nice demonstration of the utter cringe and delusions of grandeur that rule Bug's life, clearly. Quote, precisely, and this is not a malware that will mine Bitcoin, but a parasite that will mine your blood. A parasite more tenacious than any malware. I will end up making bed bug wear. Pay where the bed bugs will soon be in your home. I also love the addition of a satanic version of El Recitas. <laughs> it's giving me the same vibes as that one meme, uh, that, that kid trying to be edgy drawing the fucked up hamburger helper on, on binder paper. Yeah, that, that's the one. <clears throat> anyway. They do go on to clarify more about their motivations, <laughs> again interspersed with this um, weird satanic emoji that makes me think a 12 year old had designed it. Quote, I hate people, particularly the French, and by positioning myself well on the stock markets I can take advantage of the explosion of contaminations which has followed the execution of my project for two years. I cost the state several billions alone, and what a pleasure to wake up in the morning thinking about it. I have an absolutely considerable impact on the country, comparable to that of billionaires, thanks to my savvy and astuteness. <laughs> when I walk in the streets, no one suspects it, but I am or I will be the cause of misfortune tens of millions of people in this country alone. This is the most reddit thing I've ever read. The delusions here are potent. Bug is comparing themselves to a billionaire because of their savvy and astuteness, which Come on, man. I know the formers are telling you everything you want to hear, how you're so b diabolical and you've thought everything through, they're blown away by your master plan, but really, you put bugs in envelopes and sent them everywhere. The most impressive part was the sheer psychopathy and effort it must have taken you, but any loser with time on their hands and money to buy envelopes and stamps could have done what you did. There was actually a bit of pushback from some commenters. One replied, the OP who boasts before the 20 years in prison that await them, which, you know, pretty good point. Uh, to which Bug responds, saying that they would still think it was worth it if they went to prison for 20 years just because of the suffering they caused. Great. They also go on to say they've done, quote, careful verifications to ensure that no law in France applies to their actions. This really is sounding more and more like a smug teenager. <laughs> it's worth mentioning that the original commenter replied saying, then it must fall under bioterrorism. To which Bug was completely silent. In another post, they gloat that even if they go to prison, their quote, protégés will remain. To which I can only shudder. I'd like to say, please, if you see this kind of thing on the internet, don't imitate it. First of all, you'll probably go to jail, but you'll also just be as cringe, sad, and memeable as this person is. I also think it's comedy gold that even Bug himself admits, yes, they couldn't accomplish this without getting infested by bed bugs themselves. Quote, my apartment and my building ended up infested, but probably by my neighbors and not by me. I am particularly careful with these things. Bed bugs for others, but not for me. I move to a place that is not infested, but we will all end up being, until the last one. Their growth is exponential, and they are indestructible, resistant to absolutely everything. The day when all the supermarkets, all the buses, all the taxis, all the restaurants, until the last seat cinemas in this country will be filled with bed bugs is close, and then it will become impossible not to bring them home. I do like how they somehow blame their own bed bug infestation on their neighbors. Uh, okay. Overall, a bunch of information we got here we already knew or we could have guessed on our own. 
Honestly, the most notable post on this thread is the original, which is captioned, We had to go all in. It links to a phony news article published by an account titled Clodo News. The word Clodo means tramp, which matches their bio. Information through articles written by tramps for tramps. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean, but let me tell you, this news site is weird. Going back more than four years, there are various scam articles posted here on topics ranging from crocodile drugs to disabled athletes who aren't actually disabled to, you guessed it, bed bugs. The article bug link to is titled, Learn to Live in Harmony with Bed Bugs Without Killing Them. And, well, as you can imagine, it's filled with some pretty crazy statements. Overall, it's just a satirical article about how bed bugs and humans should try to live in harmony, but Crazy Bug actually does make an appearance within the article. Upon my original recording of this script, the Google Translate feature for this article wasn't working, and so all I was stuck with were very rudimentary translations that probably were more incomprehensible than anything. However, since then, a translated version has actually popped up, and well, it's worth reading, especially the part that pertains to the crazy bug. Crazy bug is first introduced in the section of the article titled, Where do bed bugs come from? In it, they make sure to start by claiming that bed bugs are a completely man-made genetic experiment, which makes hating them ironic because they are our own creation. I, I, I don't have to go into this part, but I just thought it was worth reading. <laughs> they then go on to say that Crazy Bug is actually a budding scientist who discovered a living ecosystem of bed bugs developing in the heart of his, well, in the heart of one of his socks, which through methods known mostly to teenage boys, became very hard and, and sticky. That's all I'll say. The scientist bug, who had trouble procreating due to difficulties finding a partner, <coughs> go figure, um, saw this as his opportunity to give birth. They then play with the idea that Crazy Bug is spreading bed bugs around the world as an act of humanism, trying to give these animals another chance at life because they've been killed so many times by humans. They then acknowledge the possibility that the, quote, father of the bedbugs will turn out to be a great evil genius motivated solely by money, destroying economic entities and entire nations by the sole force of his army of bugs, and perhaps a little also motivated by the desire to break everyone's balls to atone for his life of wandering on the infamous 18-25 to 25 forum of jeuxvideo.com. He is a virgin. And can I just say, I am so grateful for this esoteric lore drop. Now I can finally stop referring to Crazy Bug as they, and call him a he. I definitely was not going to misgender the bedbug terrorist. Thank you very much. And of course, confirmation that he is a virgin. Did I need to know this information? No. Is it going in the video? Yes. Of course, this all comes alongside the trademark narcissism and delusions of grandeur we've come to know and love from Mr. Crazy Bug. Uh, they then emphasize you should help bed bugs by letting them have your bed so you don't accidentally crush them, and you don't want to attract the ire of quote 50 year old single housewives on Facebook who think animals lives are worth more than humans. Beyond the fact that it's impossible to be both single and a housewife, uh, I think we can move on. This article probably won't be fooling anybody, uh, but it does show the extent to which these jokes are being taken on this forum. The sheer amount of content surrounding this random obsession with bedbugs is just disturbing. Uh, this is even followed up by a <laughs> poorly photoshopped image of, of a bedbug cucking El Risitas? Oh, I, I won't be showing it, um, because obvious reasons, but it's uh, oddly graphic. Other articles on the site describe how you should take the, quote, crocodile drug, a mixture of heroin, codeine, iodine, gasoline, paint remover, and red phosphorus instead of smoking cigarettes, because it's an incredible alternative medicine. Uh, to the point that you should even use it on children. 
you know, I think we're done here for now. At the end of the day, I think it's safe to say these people are unwell. Though what else could we really expect from people whose sense of humor consists of things like giving iodine to children and getting cuckolded by bedbugs? In terms of concrete conclusions, I can really offer none. But if you can look me in the eye and tell me this wild ride through the posts of one of France's most abstinent foreigners wasn't fun, then I'll mail myself a whole gaggle of bedbugs. I've been Jormai49, your host, and until next time, don't let the bedbugs bite. What a ride, and good night.